Hello, hello, and welcome to Art Snack. Art Snack is that time of day when we take just a short break from our hectic schedule to talk about art. Remember to hit that subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Hello, hello, and welcome to Art Snack. Art Snack is that time of day when we take just a short break from our hectic schedule to talk about art. My name is Jenny Lynn James, and I'm an artist who enjoys capturing music in art. I love to paint in acrylic. I paint musicians and singers. With me today is Ronald Williams, all the way from St. Michael's Barbados. Hello, Ronald. Hi, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining me on Art Snack today. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, so Ronald, tell us a little bit about your journey as an artist. When did you realize that you love art? And, and uh, tell us about your training as an artist. I realized I love art from a very, very young age. Um, I was often drawing the cartoon characters I would watch at home. Yes. And from then I realized that I had a, a talent for it. So I continued art through secondary school. Yes. After leaving secondary school, I attended the Barbados Community College, where I did two years in the associate degree, and then okay. three years in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program. Yes. So you were trained in uh, many different aspects of art, drawing, painting, etc. But you love digital art. That's what you do now. So Correct. how did that happen? That actually came about in my second year of the Bachelor of Fine Arts program. Okay. Before I had a strong affinity for drawing. I love to draw. Yes. But the digital art came about as a response to a thesis. I was working on where I was looking at the portrayal of the black figure in the media yes. and as a result digital art just lined up perfectly with what I was doing. Okay yes yes so um, because of um, what was happening in the media you just gravitated to the digital arts. So, okay so Ronald please show me some samples of your work. Sure. Right. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so tell me about this image. This image actually came out in my graduating year from BCC, from Barbados Community College. Yes. I was looking at sports and the representation of the black figure in sports. Okay. And this one is of cricket. Cricket. Which we in the Caribbean are very familiar with. Yes, yes. So it was doing, uh, you could call it a history of the sport from then till now, where we fought for independence and cricket was one of the ways that we could show a level playing field with the former colonizers, for want a better okay, word. Yes, yes, yes. And beat them at their own game. Correct. Literally. Okay. And then how that transpired from the political into a more cultural aspect. So you okay. see the carnival headdress, carnival written on the shirt, and also the Bubuzela, the South American, South African noisemaker. So this whole cultural vibe that we have with our cricket, the player yes. associated with it. And then also the monetary aspect as well. Okay, and I see um, you have like, um that handcuffs on, on the wrist? Yes. So tell me about the symbolism there. It's, I guess, back to what I said before in terms of the fight for independence, the struggle for um, displaying a post-slavery identity. Okay. And sports cricket was one of the main ways that we could show that we were on level 
and perhaps better than pharmacolonizers. So that was really right. just breaking those chains. Yes, yes. Great piece, great symbolism. Please show me another um, example of your work. This piece also came out during the final year. I was looking at Jesse Owens. <clears throat> oh, yes. Competed in the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Yes. And this is around the time of Hitler's Nazi Germany. Right, right. So it was a black athlete dominating in an era of this white nationalism, Aryan train of thought. Yes. And because he dominated the narrative, switched from blacks being inferior to blacks being somewhat bestial and superior and having more gifted natural attributes. Right. So he referenced the Tuskegee experiments on the leg to just reference how blacks at the time were scientifically experimented on just to find out different things about us to promote this idea of eugenics. Okay. Yes, yes, this is um, very powerful. And now the writing on the legs and uh, what, what um, words do you have there? The dark history of medical experimentation on black Americans from colonial times to present. Yes. Yes, yes. And then you have the Tuskegee uh, experiment too. Oh my goodness. Lots of information on this um, on this piece. And um, here, where did um, these images appear? Uh, which images? Sorry. You know, like his body, the actual torso. Oh, those are um, various paintings from, Greek various, various paintings from the Olympic Games. Right, right. So it's referencing the Olympic Games as well as yes. a starting point. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful piece. And his face is um, represented as a, um, a leopard? Is that a yes, leopard? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Just to hammer home this idea of blacks being not totally human. Well, you train the thought that blacks aren't totally human. Yes, okay. So this hybrid animal kind of creature. Right, right. Thank you so much for sharing this. Please, let's see another um, example of your work. Ah. You all recognize this one. <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. Usain Boat, another yes, athlete yes, yes. who yes. has surpassed everyone <laughs> so uh <-huh>. far. <laughs> so tell me about the imagery you use here. I was looking at this idea of um, celebration. Okay. Certain bombasticness that we, we, we as Caribbean, we, we display at certain points, the flair, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, just trying to create that energy in this piece. In this piece, yes, yes, it's great. So he's the winner. And then you put Marcus Garvey roots. What, what words do you have there? People without knowledge of it. Past is like a tree of roots. Okay. Marcus Garvey. Right, right. And Gully versus Gaza. What does that mean? Uh, um, I guess... About 10 years ago, uh -huh. there was the dance hall scene with Vibes Cartel versus Movado. Oh. And I found it interesting how a small island like Jamaica, something going on in that scene became such a global phenomenon. Yes. It influenced the rest of the Caribbean, it influenced um, North America, it influenced parts of Europe, especially the UK. Yes. So it was this, this thing of small island blowing up again we taking it with you saying both small island athlete yes greatest sprinter we've ever seen taking the world by storm right right gully versus gaza that's great so let's um see another piece okay so this one i took the da vinci vertuvius man as a reference. Okay. So the ident well, the identity of 
people that I've seen growing up coming from the working class slash lower class community and some of the ideas and attitudes associated with that meal. So there's this obvious influence of violence, um, alcohol influence, okay. this idea of street life, but also a certain reverence and strong connection to Christianity that we have in the Caribbean just by indoctrination, you could say. Indoctrination, that's it. <laughs> Okay, and then um, it's a clock, so is there any um, particular significance of um, time? Yes. I was looking at the idea of a memento mori, this idea that remember you must die, or from Ecclesiastes, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes say, all is vanity. So I was looking at that idea that all the focus on the material will eventually pass away. Okay. So spiritual in a way as well. Yes. And I was just wondering now, um, the, the many hands and um, the uh, limbs, is there any significance mm -hmm. to that in the, in the image? Yeah, it just goes through like certain cycles and aspects. So the two hands outstanding holding the guns is a reference to the inner violence that we might see in males living in these environments. Right. The middle finger is a certain precociousness and boldness in the in the face of authority. Okay. As the drink is a reference to the party aspect, the need to self-medicate. Okay, yes, yes, to cope with the environment. Correct. And then okay. in the sense of the hands praying is again that reference to the at the back of our mind, still the mental um, deference to Christianity. It's still always there, regardless of the activity being done. Okay. Very, very powerful piece. Thank and we you. have time for just one more. Sure. Uh, Ooh, maybe not this one. <laughs> so tell me um, who you use as a model for this. I was the model, actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, very much like the, the piece just now, it's a reference to that, the glamour associated with violence. Okay. The allure associated with it for many males growing up in this kind of society. Yes. They have the trappings of the gold, but then on his chest and exposed stomach, there are the markings that you'll find in a, stained glass window of a church. Oh, I see. And then what about the headdress? Any significance? Yes. I was also looking at um, the Caribbean aspect as well. So this idea of the mask. So one is a mask and we, we mask career, we play a carnival. Okay. Also the idea of a mask um, acting as a block to hide the identity. Whereas there's this performative masculinity that we often portray. Okay. To remain invulnerable. Right, right. So you're masking the true identity. Mm -hmm. True person hiding behind the mask. Okay. Very good. So thank you so much for sharing your work with us. Thank you for having me. So Ronald, please tell me a bit about your artistic projects. Currently, my work is on show at the Bowling Green State University in Ohio. Okay. About three pieces in an exhibition called The Visible Man. The Visible Man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations I'm, on um, being accepted thanks. into this exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I've also recently collaborated with an American poet, goes by the name of Richard Hamilton, okay. for his debut book called When They See Us. Say this again. When they see us. When they see us. Okay, so you've done illustration for the book? I have. Well, a few of my pieces I have worked on previously and he reacted to them. Okay, excellent. And what about um, 
uh, physical exhibit in Barbados. Do you think he'll be doing anything in, in the coming year? I recently did a show at the Frame and Art Company, and I'm also currently on an online art auction that is supposed to finish today. It's held okay. by the Barbados Manufacturing Association. Okay, okay. Well, congratulations. And um, hopefully um, in the new year, we'll be seeing and hearing more about you and with uh, more upcoming exhibitions. So tell viewers how they can reach you and how they can see more of your work. Sure. You can find me on Instagram at r.o.j.williams. Also, you can reach me by email, ronald.oj.williams at gmail.com. And also on my website, ronaldwilliamsartist.com. Ronaldwilliamsartist.com. Okay. Also on WhatsApp, the number is 1-246-250-8051. Okay, so I'll put all this contact information here on the video. Viewers mm -hmm. can also see my work at jennylynnjames.com backslash art and on Facebook and Instagram at Art by Jenny Lynn James. That's Art by Jenny Lynn James. Thanks again, Ronald. Sincerely Major appreciate for having me. meeting you today. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Remember to hit that subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Hope to see you every day. Hit the subscribe button.